Hey guys, what's up and welcome back to the BFS Fishing Channel. And in this video, we're gonna be going over and doing a casting comparison of all the reels right here. Basically what this is, is a casting comparison test of 28 millimeter spool reels. It's not gonna be the most comprehensive test, but it's gonna be fairly comprehensive because these options are ones that are readily available on the market right now. What I wanna do is talk to you guys a little bit about the test setup, but before we get to that, I want to ask you guys, if you haven't subscribed to the channel and you have been getting good knowledge, value, education out of the videos that I've been making for you, I encourage you to consider subscribing to the channel. It really helps with the algorithm and really helps get the channel out there. And I wanna say a big thank you to all of you guys who have already subscribed to the channel because without your support and without your help, without your comments and inquiries and questions, all of the conversations that we've had, this channel wouldn't be here and I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing for you guys, which is doing my best to bring you unbiased reviews of BFS Tackle. Anyways, with that said, let's go ahead and talk about the setup that I used for this casting comparison. And so basically what I did was I used one lure, the same lure between all of these reels, and that is the Supercontinent Polaris five centimeter aging worm with a number 10 EWG and a number 000 micro snap swivel. And so this whole setup basically weighs 0.53 grams. So all of these reels right here are actually able to cast 0.53 grams. Now, to keep the testing setup similar or exactly the same between all of the reels, what I did was I used the same line. I would actually take this particular line is 50 meters of 0.6 go Zukibo braid and I would spool it and unspool it and move it between each of the reels that I was actually casting at that time. So it took a, quite a bit of time to do all of that. Now to keep the rod the same, what I did was I chose this rod right here. This is the Hasida or High Star Solomon 2 and it's rated to cast 0.6 to six gram lures. And the reason why I chose this rod is because it's only a four, eight, two rod. So it's four, four foot, eight inches. And the reason why I chose a very short rod is because I wasn't really going for distance and where I'm testing is actually my backyard. My backyard isn't the longest backyard in the world. So I have to keep the casting distances shorter than the length of my backyard. Okay. For the rest of this video, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be talking about all of these reels individually, what I noticed and their casting distances. And we're going to go from the shortest distance casting reel to the farthest distance casting reel. And then we're going to talk about some of the, the findings and some of the observations that I've had about all of these reels while I was casting them. During the time that I talk to you about the reel, I'm going to go ahead and overlay my actual casting footage. And what I was doing for each reel was basically practicing or giving myself about a five minute warm up period where I could cast, kind of tune the reel to however I thought would be the best for my personal casting, and then give myself three casts at the very end of that. And I would measure each of those three casts and then take the average distance of those casts and then measure that and compare that to all of the other reels here. Now, you have to take all of this with a very huge grain of salt because I, I'm a human. Uh, and whether I like it or not, I may have some subconscious biases towards certain reels. And also the way that I'm casting is not gonna be the exact same for all of these reels. It might be slightly different here and there, and I won't really be too aware of that. The other thing is, is that I cannot control the environmental factors. So, you know, wind is definitely a huge factor. And if you'll notice in the casting footage, there's a little windmill that my daughter has in the backyard. And what I do is I try to wait until that windmill stops moving so that I know that there's not going to be much wind. But anyways, that aside, let's go ahead and start talking about the reels. And so the shortest distance casting reel is this one right here. This is the 2023 Daiwa SSRTW. And it's not that big of a surprise to me that this is the shortest distance casting reel because the spool on this reel is actually quite heavy. And Daiwa never meant or intended for this reel to cast under one gram. This is a bass finesse reel. And for bass fishing, the Japanese don't really care too much about sub one gram casting. 
Uh, I think sub one gram casting is something that the Chinese are more uh, in tune with and kind of marketing and going towards, but the Japanese don't really seem to be all that phased by sub one gram casting. So what I've actually done is I've actually shimmed the side plate with about 0.1 millimeters worth of shim. And I found that in a Japanese YouTuber video where he took a 0.2 millimeter shim and put it in the side plate. But what I found was that it actually kind of makes it so that the convenient casting nature, the breaking profile of this reel kind of disappears and it becomes very, very unstable. And so that's another reason why you're not gonna see some other reels on here like the Arc Gravity BFS slash Hybo Arise Air. For whatever reason, I could not get that reel to cast very consistently for me. And so I just was getting way too many backlashes. And so I did not include that reel in this uh, comparison. But anyways, the Daiwa SSR TW managed about 35 0.17 feet. So pretty respectable for the only Japanese contender, the most premium reel in this uh, lineup here. But that's the Daiwa SSR TW. The next reel we're going to talk about is the Longzu B50 DBC1. And this reel is only rated down to 0.8 grams. What I was finding though is that the reel doesn't really like to cast 0.53 grams. Um, and so I was really having to pump the brakes up fairly high, use a lot of spool friction, and still I was getting quite a few backlashes, which is very, very strange because this uses the same exact braking system as this reel right here. And this is the Purler slash DMK MyEC EXA reel. The experience that I've had between these two reels right here with this particular weight were so, so different. I did not enjoy the experience with this. However, it did cast and end up casting about 36 feet on average, but it was very, very difficult to get that distance with this reel. This reel, on the other hand, which is the next reel, um, and it came in at about 36.08 feet, is the Silver Feather MyEC EXA. And I cannot say enough good things about this reel. Very easy to cast, very convenient. I mean, you can cast hard and it still doesn't really give you that many backlashes. It will, it will backlash. But at the same time, it does not backlash nearly as much as this reel right here. I don't know what it is. Maybe the tuning is slightly different. Um, I don't know. But the funny thing is, is that this spool weighs actually about two grams more than this spool and is rated to carry a lot more line than this spool is. In addition to that, I feel like the reel is made to a higher quality. I don't feel any geariness at all whatsoever. The star drag is tuned really well. Uh, I'm going to have a short term impression video of this reel right here coming up and you'll see some of the, the cons that I've uh, noticed with this particular reel. This reel doesn't really have too many cons. So if you're looking for a DC BFS reel, this might be a solid choice for you guys. Okay, the next reel that comes up in our lineup is actually going to be the High Star GU99, which is a shocker to me because High Star made such a huge point about making this spool extremely light and the reel itself very light. But what I was noticing is very, very inconsistent casting in the distances and also a decent amount of backlashing actually. And I think the reason for that is the fact that the magnet strength seems to be weaker than this reel right here. In general, when I swap spools between the two reels, what I would notice is that the G99, it would need one full brake setting strength higher than on this reel right here. So I think the magnets on this reel are weaker than they are on this reel right here. But anyways, the High Star GU99 came in at 36.17 feet. And moving on to the next reel in the lineup, it's the Cast King Valiant Eagle 2 Pro. And this reel is a very, very surprising reel to see at that uh, distance. And it's also a reel that I've been fairly impressed with, with one con that I've noticed, which is the geariness in the retrieve. I don't know what it is, but my particular copy has a geary retrieve and it it kind of bothers me 
quite a bit. But outside of that, the reel does feel very premium. It's set up very well, tuned very well. I mean, when I was casting, my breaks were almost always right smack dab in the middle. The star drag is set up extremely nice. The ergonomics are really good. And it's just a really premium feeling reel for the price. Okay, the next reel is the High Star Aurora Air. And this one got a distance of 37.08 feet. And that's actually tied with this reel right here, which is the Pureler DMK Silver Feather Air. But we'll go ahead and talk about the Aurora Air first. It's hard for me to really recommend this and this reel, the, the GU99, primarily because they've been known to have some quality control issues. And unless you're kind of handy with uh, tearing down reels and kind of tinkering with your reel, it's hard for me to recommend this reel to beginners or newcomers to beat the VFS scene unless you're very, very comfortable with doing some maintenance on your own reel. But outside of that, if you get a good copy, the reel does cast very well and extremely consistently. I mean, I think between the three casts, there was one cast that was 35.25 feet. And so this reel technically cast the furthest, I think. Yeah, technically out of the entire bunch, this reel had the farthest cast at 38.5 feet. So very impressive out of a, you know, right now on AliExpress, I think you can find them for like 35 to $45 for a reel that cheap to get that far is very, very impressive. However, again, because of the quality control issues, it's really difficult for me to go ahead and recommend that to anybody buying a reel. However, this reel, on the other hand, is very, very consistent in its casting, and I was able to get 37.08 feet again with this reel. However, the difference between this and this reel is that this reel, in my opinion, feels a lot more premium, it's a lot more convenient to cast, and it doesn't have the same quality control issues that the High Star Aurora has. So, Silver Feather Air, um, very highly recommended reel of the bunch and the reel that casts the farthest out of all of these reels is surprise surprise the ff01 cormorant it is a cdm reel that i have been very very happy with it was previously my favorite reel of 2024 but i don't know between this reel and this reel they kind of have two slightly different places this reel is a lot more versatile. This reel is a lot more adept at casting the 0.53 gram lure. Not by a whole lot, but at the same time, this reel is a lot more premium feeling than this reel. But between the two, I don't know. I, I'm liking this a lot more now, I think. This reel might have taken the spot for my favorite reel of 2024 from this reel right here, which is a lot to say. Anyways, what did I find out about casting all of these reels here on this table? Well, what it tells me is that BFS reels from China that are 28 millimeter spool reels, there's not much difference between all of them. Really, the performance is pretty much on par between the lowest casting reel to the highest casting reel if you want to cast a 0.53 gram lure. And that's that's saying a lot. It means that really now you're not looking for the casting performance. What you're looking for is the quality and your experience, your user experience with the reel. Are you looking for a DC reel that makes a sound and casts pretty conveniently? Are you looking for a bang for buck? Are you looking for something that's really, really budget? Are you looking for something's kind of middle of the road? You know, all of these reels here cast 0.53 grams extremely well. So as a consumer, it's a good time to be in the BFS world because all of these are readily available. All of these are pretty attainable. I mean, we're talking about as low as $35 all the way up to what, I don't know what this is costing now, like 325 US dollars and in between. You can have BFS reels that have DC technology. You can have a round reel that has BFS DC technology. You can have a reel that is very, very lightweight, very premium and uh, really, really consistent casting. But to have all of these choices available to us, we're living in a time where we're spoiled as consumers. And that's a good thing because there's a lot of competition and presumably 
we've got a lot of options for us as BFS anglers. Anyways, that's going to do it for this video, guys. If you have any questions or comments or concerns or you just want to talk about things, go ahead and leave it in the comment section down below. I do my best to answer and respond to all of you guys. And with that being said, thank you so much for watching, guys, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.